What up, Rap Fame? It's time for season two, episode two of Rap Fame TV. So last week we talked to Breeze, who was a titan in the app with loads and loads and loads of featured tracks and loads and loads of experience. And today we get to talk to someone a bit different. We get to talk to Vigilante Flauda. He's a guy who's only been in the app for a couple of months and he's already got 15 featured tracks. He's been on our Best of June playlist. It's pretty clear that he's not new to this. He's got some serious experience that he's bringing to the game, but he's new to the app. So it's going to be great to get to know the man behind the tunes that are the hottest tunes in rap fame right now. But that's enough out of me. Let's get chatting to Vigi. Hey, I am with Vigi. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's going on, brother? It's been a long time coming. I'm glad to be here. All right, sweet. Like, let, let's start with your name. Let's start with the basics. Where do you think it came from? Like, where did, where's the inspiration? What does it mean, Vigilante Florida? Like, Vigilante, uh, back in the day, I used to be a hardhead. I used to hang out with a pretty tough crowd. They gave it the name Vigilante because I was one that kind of took matters into my own hands. I didn't wait for any type of authority to try to justify anything that I feel like that needed to be justified. I just took things in my own hands and what I felt like was right and just in my mind. So that's how I ended up with the name Vigilante in Florida. I'm from Florida. That's where that came from. So when I started to rap, I just broke it down to Vigi because I felt like it was more radio friendly. No, and it's super catchy. You're like the Batman of the rap scene in Florida. There we go. I think you registered in early June, and since then you got a rookie tag. And since you got that tag, you've been featured more than 15 times, which is crazy. So firstly, how did you find the app? Man, to be honest with you, my kids found the app. They was rapping on it. They was having me listen to their music. Because uh, truth be told, at the time, I've been inactive for a little while. I've given a lot of music. I just needed the break to try to do other things. My kids downloaded the app, and I was just listening to what they were doing. They were like, Pop, you should do it. You could rap. And at first, I was like, nah, that's for kids. So I started looking into it myself, and I said, oh, no, this actually looked interesting. It looked kind of dope. So I set up an account, started loading music on there. And to be honest with you, the app kind of brought that fire back. So I thank y'all for that. Oh man, we aim to please. Thank you very much. I'm getting money, getting money, getting money. Tens and twenties, fifty hundreds. Why you laying? So it's great to know that it brought someone like you back into music. What was your life in music like before you took this break? What was your experience like? Do you have any cool stories, maybe? I guess when it really started taking off for me in 2008, I was actually released from um, DOC. I had to do three years. So when I came home, my dad's friend AJ, who was my manager at the time, he came out. He was like, "Yo, I got a son." He brought me to the studio and there I met B-Roll, Beachside Entertainment, and Seven Days Off Production. And big names, man. So I came in there and I spit a couple bars. Let down for me as artists, I was meeting up with, his name's Brian Griffin, which is the manager for Webby from Savage Life ENT with Webby and Boozy. So I was doing a show, they came up to me, they wanted to hear me perform, but I'm not gonna speak no names or throw no shade. I told the person with the label I was with at the time, these cats are coming to see me me y'all just make sure you know my sound scores and everything are good well they didn't have a full contract with me but the other artists they did they wanted to push him so they kind of took my music and replaced it with the other artists when it came time for me to perform the other artists music was playing i was a hothead so i kind of made a big scene about it and that opportunity was gone there was another opportunity when i was with another label i wrote most of the songs i came up with most of the hooks i was more like a ditty when it came to coordinating because i just want everything to sound perfect i listened to a lot of michael jackson earth wind fire what have you i want everything yeah, yeah. bone thugs and harmony they were real good at it at the time. So I just wanted to make sure things went perfect with anything we do. I want people to be able to close their eyes and paint a vivid picture of what we're saying and believe yeah. what we say. So I did a lot of the music for that. And we were actually invited to go to the BT Indie Awards. The artist that actually got invited, the songs that were supposed to go on me and his album together, he put on his album, put it out. They heard it, flew up to New York. It was asking who the other artist was, which was me, but I wasn't signed under contract. So he wanted to hurry up and get me signed under a contract. So he had naysay about me and he able to get salary cap over me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. I didn't sign the contract. From that point on, it just started to digress. I started to do less and less music and I'm a barbershop owner. I have one of the best barbershops in Brevard County, DT's Fadeaway Cuts, you can look it up. Invested in that, I'm invested in my family and their dreams. My kids play basketball and football. You know, I 
started to coach and do other things. So it wasn't until this point where my kids found the app. I started to, you know, kind of like when Tyson got out of jail and never thought he would probably box again or when Michael Vick got out yeah, of jail. Yeah. Kind of thought he would never play football again. It just started to, that inspiration and that, you know, that Yeah, vibe. you can't keep it out of you, man. When it's in you, it's in you. I'm getting money, getting money, getting money. Tens and twenties, fifty hundreds. Why you laying the... So you've got like loads of experience then. You've been with labels, you've had drama. So do you think that's the key to your instant success in the app then? The fact that you just bring in like so much experience. I believe they had a lot to do with it because I kind of implement all that. I kind of know what the people want. I kind of feel the crowd, go through the chat rooms, kind of fill out, you know, what people's feeling. And I just attack it in ways that I know this worked with me on the outside. It's worked pretty good. I'm getting money, getting money, getting money, tens and twenties, fifty hundreds. Why you laying the you, you mentioned like some of your influences. I feel like you've got like your southern at heart. There's a lot of East Coast stuff going on. So what sort of artist got you inspired, like inspires your flows, your feel? As far as East Coast, I would say Big L, Nas, Jay-Z as far as swag, Biggie, of course, you know, who doesn't love Biggie? Who doesn't um, love Biggie? I also listen to a whole lot of Wu-Tang, um, Red Man, Method Man, Violator from back in the day, which consists of Busta Rhymes and, you know, and all those Busta guys. I terrifyingly well, fast. There's not really an artist, especially back in the 90s, that I did not like. I was able to take something from all those guys and kind of implement it in what I do. 90s comes out all the time in your flows, man. So it's good yeah, to have that value. I, I call myself the Bruce Lee rap, man. I just take everything and put it together and make cheap condo with it. <laughs> I'm getting money, getting money, getting money. Tens of twenties, fifty hundreds. Why you laying You have a track called On The Block, which is a really sick Best of June playlist, which everyone should check out if they haven't. And it's got like over two and a half thousand plays. Absolute banger. Did you notice anything particularly special when you were making it? Did you know you were onto something like particularly good? Did it feel different to your other tracks maybe? To be honest with you, when I made the track, that was one of the first tracks I made when I came home. I honestly didn't know how big that track was going to be. I had no idea. Something at the time, it was just, I believe it was so good because that was my lifestyle at the time. So when I sped it, I felt it, you know, and mm. it, it just came out fluidly because that was the lifestyle that we were living at that time. I had no idea that track was going to be as big as it did, um, especially now when I put it on Rap Fame and saw no variety of got the views it was starting to get in the comments. I was like, wow, I was like, man, like, they just don't know. I did that track a long time ago. I'm getting money, getting money, getting money, tens of twenties, fifty hundreds, why you laying You didn't even know you were onto something, but because you were keeping it so real, because it was exactly what you were feeling, all the power just came out in it. Uh, exactly. In a lot of your bars, you talk about grinding and a lot of your comments I see uh, loads of lyrics about coming through hardship loads of trench metaphors fighting metaphors so do you think those kind of ideas of like grinding and fighting and persevering tie into like the vigilante aspect it's very crucial because I'm a fighter at heart I came through a lot of adversities all I know is to fight fight until you're dead that's my mentality and Get Rich or Die Trying was probably one of my favorite albums in the early 2000s based off of the, the title alone that's just the way I feel I feel like the only way you're going to get the way you're trying to go, you got to fight through. Wow, man. It seems like you fought every step of the way. And, and now it's just great to have you back fighting again in the scene. Hopefully not yeah. at venues anymore. Right, right. You know, it's all it's all lesson learned. You get older, you realize everybody wants it just like you. Everybody want to taste that fame just like you do. They make irrational decisions that they end up regretting later. I'm I'm straight with those guys now. We talked it out. You know, I understand. It's probably not something I would have done. I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have made sure. No, me made. neither. Not everybody could be on the top of the pyramid. There's only one brick up there, and everybody want to be that brick. Well, well said, man. I'm getting money, getting money, getting money. Alright, so I'm gonna hit you with a quick high question around. Let's see how many of these you can get through in a minute. You just gotta tell me the truth and you gotta tell me as quickly as you can. Is that cool? Alright, let's go. Alright, your time starts now. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Country living or city living? City. Yeah. White bread or brown bread? Brown. Yeah. Kanye or Jay Z? Jay Z. Now. Sports or fashion? Sports. Rice or pasta? Pasta. Ooh. Uh, sneakers or boots? Sneakers. Wu-Tang or NWA? NWA. Would you rather cook or clean? Cook. Would you rather be like the president for a day or like an astronaut in space for a day? President. Ooh. That was a hard one. Batman or Superman? Batman. Oh, and that's your time, man. I don't think you quite managed to beat Breeze, who got 13, but you did get 12, so you're a close second for season two. 
Yeah, you had some good answers. I thought you'd say um, Wu Tang because you mentioned them earlier, and I definitely knew you'd say Batman because vigilante. You know, I would have, I would have said Wu Tang if you were to put somebody else. We didn't get to touch the West Coast base. I'm heavily West Coast influenced as well. You could probably tell by the way I talk and the way I rap. I may have the metaphors, you know, and the way I spit may be Eastern, but the authority in which I spit, I got that all from the West. Wow, so you, you sort of just taking influences from everywhere. That's the best way to be a musician, I guess. I really hope we get to see more of you. You keep pumping out tracks because it seems like the sky's the limit and you're taking all this experience into the app. We just We support you, man, and we support anyone who can come into the app and make this bigger difference so quickly so we think it's, it's really awesome yeah i appreciate everything you know this was an honor for me especially like coming into the app and just bringing that fire back in me and then getting the interview i put this in another one of the great books of experiences that i have that's so good man well keep that fire burning hot right we'll make sure we keep in touch and also when lockdown ends make sure i come to your barber shop so you can give me a little haircut because i think i need one <laughs> yeah, not a problem thanks so much man i guess we'll talk to you soon Peace. Oh, what a badass, what a fighter VG is. He's been through so much, he's got so much experience, he's been through ups and downs, and he's just persevering. And it seems to be like the core to all the great artists I chat to that they just don't give up. And hardship makes them fight even harder. So I hope you guys can take inspiration from that, just like you did with Breeze. Also, that man's beard makes me jealous. I'm definitely going to go get a trim over at his sometime. He's going to sharpen me up. All right, excellent. That's all from me. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week for another episode of Rap Fame TV. One out of a million can copy my lane. Come up for me, I'm on top of my game. Haters get mad when they get left out. You stuck with the bag. I'm headed to the next drop.